exhaust gas recirculation flow insufficient detected. Yeah, so that's the EGR valve is plugged up. So that's what that engine light is. So there's the EGR valve. And there's my the intake into the engine. So I'm going to start it up like this and uh, I'll see if I got exhaust coming out of the EGR valve and I'll see if I got uh, blow by coming out of the intake. Yeah, there's a little bit of exhaust coming out of there. Hi Brian, here I am checking if there's exhaust gas coming out of the EGR valve that should be closed. And I'm also checking to see if there's compression pressure leaking past the intake valves. If the intake valves are leaking, you may notice a hesitation in the intake airflow. We'll see how it idles without that exhaust gas going in there. No misfires, no rough running, nothing with the EGR disconnected. So the reason this thing is running poorly is it's sucking exhaust in all the time. So yeah, I'm gonna block off the EGR and we'll see if I get an engine light from low flow again. Uh, I just gotta figure out how to take that thing off. It's such a small uh, motor and such a small amount of exhaust gas going in, I guess, uh, you know, that could be the EGR cooler there. Just the the pipe running into the, the EGR itself uh, runs coolant through it, and then that's the EGR cooler. Makes sense. Yeah, it's definitely easier to block that off on the EGR side. So I'll pull that off on the EGR valve itself. So these two on the side here, uh, the, the pipe coming into the EGR valve, that's the EGR cooler and it's also the, well, it's the exhaust into the EGR and the EGR cooler all in one. You could just call it a cooled, uh, a cooled pipe. It's got the uh, uh, coolant running through it. So it just looks like a pipe. The other end has a barb on it too for the coolant. So that's a coolant line. And then uh, the exhaust gas goes through the center of that thing. Why this thing is so oily? I guess that's from uh, bad, uh, from uh, not changing the oil as often as it should. Okay, so I'll pull that off of there and then we'll make a little plate. I'll make two of them because I'm going to do the same thing with the other car. And then we'll block it off at the EGR valve. And then uh, no more uh, rough running. Size and madness, so well, there's a lot of oil yeah, in there. The, 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 what is it a lot of oil in there. Because of the, um, again, it's okay, this so the self-replicating, so its impact gathers. Intake the, pipe the is disconnected with, with there. The time. Um, it means that a lot of. Okay, so there's three bolts that hold the EGR in. I pulled the the actuator off the top there. There's three bolts for the actuator, and then just the. Uh, pushes on that plunger there. Well, it's not seized, but it's probably not closing all the way. Yeah, 
And then uh, to get the EGR out, there's three bolts. There's one right here. Uh, there's one I pulled out already. Uh, it's on the bottom here. Here, wait, where is it? It's right there underneath the connection for the for the exhaust gas to go in under the EGR tube exhaust gas cooling tube so there's one bolt that holds the EGR on there on the bottom and then there's one right here that's uh, below the motor on the intercooler there so to get that one out I gotta pull the fan off the intercooler so this fan has to come off and it uh, the just got to cut these zip ties and then move the wires out of the way or move the bundle of wires out of the way okay so you don't have to pull the fan off the intercooler to get that last bolt on the EGR off you just have to get it loose you just have to get it loose enough you can wiggle it around so you can get your uh, socket and your uh, extension in there to loosen the bolt off so that's what i'm going to do so you can see there i got my uh, socket on the on the head of the bolt and i got my extension on there and to get that in there i just lift it up on the fan shroud that's uh, popped out on the bottom and got my uh, socket on there so once you crack those bolts loose, you can loose them off by hand. So I'll get I'll get it loose and then uh, I'll take it out the rest of the way by hand. Almost done. There goes my socket. That's a really good spot for stuff to go missing. There we go. There's one uh, greasy uh, EGR. Such a tiny little valve on there. I could just plug that hole with JB Weld too and screw trying to weld in there. Just plug it up with, fill it up with eight JB Weld and then put it back on. I can't put too much in there because there's the. There's the actuating valve there. Holy smokes, that's just a... Does that thing even make a difference? Like, holy smokes, everything is so tiny. Well, I guess that can let a lot of exhaust gas in there. Like, holy shit, that's just a tiny little opening. Tiny little opening. Compared to a, a truck or something. That's a pretty tiny EGR. Okay, so how does it seal on there? Is there a gasket? Doesn't appear to be a gasket on that thing. Or did the gasket fall down in there? Did I lose the gasket? Oh, there it is. Okay. So there's the gasket. A little pressure sensitive metal gasket. So just like that. Sure, I can make one of those. So there really isn't like, there really isn't that much, uh, 
like pressure on one of these things. Like, I have a. So if you are gonna make a block out plate, it doesn't have to be some kind of big thick plate. Like, you can cut it with a pair of tin snips. Like, here I got eighth inch steel, a little bit less than eighth inch steel with a 316. So I just got it soaking in a pail of gas. Just make sure that plunger goes in. Goes in far enough. It really wasn't that dirty. It's pretty, pretty clean. Just uh, if I cleared the coat a couple times and ran it a bit more, it probably wouldn't even been plugging up. It's not even really, not even really carboned up that much. It's just, just had, it has been sitting and driving in the city lots. So this plunger wouldn't go down all the way is what was going on. And then it was stuck open a little bit. It wasn't completely sealed. So the, so I'll put the metal gasket on the put the metal gasket on the on the uh, exhaust side uh, with the block out plate and on this side I don't know maybe I'll go find uh, some gasket material from an exhaust manifold or something or just use some high temp silicone on there uh, we'll see what I have here this side it doesn't matter if it's leaking a little bit this the only time uh, it's gonna leak is when, like I said, when uh, when it's under boost pressure. And the only time the boost pressure is ever gonna reach it is if the EGR valve is open. And it's never gonna suck in anything through there unless you got a really big gap and the EGR is open at idle or something. But so, yeah, seal it uh, moderately. It doesn't have to be. An incredible seal on there and regular silicone will probably fail after a certain amount of time because it might get actually no this is this will seeing as how I got it I'll have it well it might get hot because it, it's connected to the exhaust it may get a little bit hot but once it travels up that EGR pipe and by the time it gets here uh, it's probably going to be pretty cool and it's not like there's exhaust gas flowing through it. It's got to go, got to go up the EGR pipe to even get there, and then it'll be on the black. It'll be on the back of the blockout plate. So it's silicone will probably work. It's never gonna, yeah, yeah. You can use regular silicone on there. Probably be okay. And that's what I got. I'm gonna silicone the intake side and uh, put the metal gasket on the on the EGR tube side. Okay. That's pretty clean and uh, that's actuating pretty good now. Yep, yeah, no problem with that. Okay, so that's ready to go back in. Might as well cut it out of the side I already cut off of. And it can be a little bit bigger than your gasket. You know, it doesn't even have to be the same shape. As long as you get the bolt holes in the right spot, then it'll uh, work just fine. As long as it doesn't hit anything. You could even just cut it square. It's just, uh, if it hangs past the flange on the housing for the EGR, maybe it won't fit in the space. 
So, uh, you know, you can make it a little bit bigger, but I wouldn't make it too big because it may not fit in the area where it's going. take a, a grinder to the holes and uh, flatten it out so it doesn't dig into the aluminum housing I'll give it I'll give it a buff with the not the grinding disc but the sanding disc on the grinder doors and windows and windows and doors and stuffed animals there we go here's my uh, sanding disc I wanted to test it out to see if it fit on there but the I guess it won't get in the way. That one lines up. Okay, holes are good. I'll just double check here, make sure it bolts on properly. I know I checked already, but it was at an angle. It's not too tight. You don't want it too tight. You want a little bit of a little bit of looseness around the bolts. Because when things expand and uh, move around and you know could start doing weird things. So you want a little bit of a gap around the bolt. There you go. Nice and loose. Perfect. Nice and loose, but not too loose. The gasket will go on the will go on the EGR cooler pipe side, and uh, I'll silicone on the EGR valve, and that'll go on there. Okay. So that's what the blockout plate looks like with the high heat paint on it. Okay. So time to put it in. Probably put some silicone on the valve and uh, put it in place and put the two bolts in first before I bolt it in tight. And that'll, uh, and then I don't have to worry about trying to bend that tube to get it in. It'll all bend together and bend to the right angle when I tighten it up. Uh, it'd be in a small, uh, a tiny little shim in there it's not gonna have to bend too much if if any it should uh, bolt right up and no, no issues I did uh, put a little bit of oil on the valve there just uh, make sure it stays uh, nice and lubricated so it's not uh, locking up in the future Something like that. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, silicone this the valve first with the shim on there before I put it in. It's 
So it's 11 o'clock at night, it sure is quiet. It's just the owl. Just me and the owl and maybe the bunny running around. It's not finding the hole. Ah, you piece of crap. Ah, you piece of good stuff. Piece of good stuff, get in there. So I, I put the top of the locking pliers on there, on the EGR pipe, just hooked it in there against the <laughs> sensor for the uh, injection pump. So uh, what's going on is there's not quite enough room there because I have a little little bit extra with the shimmed out uh, shimmed out uh, blocking plate. So when I go put the blocking plate on there to get it to line up, I'll just uh, push down on the pliers a little bit to pry out that uh, EGR tube. And then hopefully I can get the, the uh, bolt to line up in the EGR body there. Okay, so I got the top one in. It's just a matter of getting that bottom one in now. So those bolts can cross thread very easily. So at least they look like they can cross thread pretty easily. So uh, make sure and uh, get them going in straight. Cause you can, you can move it with the end of the socket like that to get it to line up properly. So we'll make sure they're going in nice and straight. Don't cross thread them cause then you'd be really screwed. So I'm going to have to snug up this bottom one. I can tighten the top one later because uh, there's a, a mounting bolt for the EGR valve here at the bottom. So this one has to be tight before I can put that one in. Or actually, I, I suppose I can tighten it after if the bolt head is here. Yeah, I can still tighten it after, I think. But I'm going to put that bottom one in first just to make sure. This one is the pain in the butt one, kind of, maybe not so much. You have a, a swivel extension on your socket, this is the spot for it right here. Get the socket on there first and then tighten it up. And then the short one goes here. The short one's the one you gotta move the fan shroud around to get it in there. And the 
short one goes in here. Okay, let's uh, give it a quick uh, a quick run here and see what it sounds like. 